We're back, and I'm here with Tim Carney and Sam Sadar, and we're talking about how things get done these days in Washington or not. Uh, Sam, I actually want to begin with you, because I think this question of executive power is, is an important one for, for liberals to deal with. Uh, at the National Review, Yuval Levin gave an example. He, he, tried, he said liberals should think of George W. Bush failing to pass a tax cut and then directing the IRS to simply not enforce penalties for those who, didn't, who, for those who decide to not pay over 25 percent marginal rate. So how is this any different than that? Well, I mean, I think if the argument was that uh, the IRS didn't have the resources to uh, collect those taxes, I think the president might actually have a, a, a decent argument. I wouldn't, I wouldn't particularly like it. Uh, but this is really just a question of allocating resources. I mean, we know that there's, uh, there's not enough money to deport uh, 12 million people in this country. And we have enough money uh, maybe to do a half a million a year, if that. And so uh, the bottom line is there's going to be a lot of people who are not not going to be deported, and and simply rationalizing that, putting uh, making that process rational, uh, makes all the sense in the world. So, Tim, to what Sam says, in a world where Congress is not going to match the resources and the actual law, and in a world where we are letting many, many undocumented immigrants live here, why shouldn't the executive branch bring some order and be clear about what the priorities are? Now, we, again, we don't know what Obama's yeah, so going this to is do, all a little bit but of the, the premise is upsetting when I hear this just because I hear, well, if Congress doesn't act, that's sort of the words Brian Boitler uses in one of those articles. Brian, and some and of the, the New Republic. The new, and the New Republic, yeah. that's so some of the frame that you're putting it there. But that really just means if Congress doesn't pass something that's agreed on by the White House, and I know it looks like it's a bigger sort of uh, agreement on immigration because you've got not only the White House, you've got the Chamber of Commerce, you've got all these liberal groups. And that's, that seems to be why Obama thinks he can get away with doing something, because you have a unanimity among the power elite. But just because the Republicans don't agree with them doesn't mean they're not doing anything. There are bills that could pass both chambers that would address some of these problems, but they would also have to not have sort of a big influx of immigration. It would have to take care of some of the conservative concerns about massive immigration. So this idea, oh, well, they're not doing anything, so we have to act, really means they're not doing something Obama would like, so we have to act. And that's when we start to worry about it being undemocratic. It's saying, if you don't do what I want you to do, I will do it myself. Sam, isn't, is, doesn't Tim have a point there? Isn't this really the White House saying that if there is not a legislative compromise that is agreeable to them? They will stretch executive powers to almost make that compromise fact before it is law? Well, well what I think the, the White House is doing is, is uh, just simply uh, being, uh, you know, exercising politics. I mean, the bottom line is the White House could have done this three years ago. They could have done it four years ago. Uh, they could do it at any time. I mean, so we can, we can argue and we can say, and, and Tim can say that, well, uh, President Obama's not being very polite about it or he's being a little bit uh, trolly about it. And, and that very well may be the case. But that doesn't uh, change the fact that it's certainly within his powers to do this. And uh, frankly, there have been activists who have been asking him to do this for years. And when he said a couple years ago that he didn't have the authority to do it, in fact, he did have the authority. Uh, he, just, he just, from a political standpoint, didn't want to upset the Republicans. And the Republicans have shown that it doesn't matter if you upset their feelings at all. Uh, they're simply not going to pass anything under any circumstances. They've said now the reason why they won't is because they're afraid that President Obama will not actually execute the laws that they pass, which we all know doesn't pass the laugh test. So, I mean, uh, yeah, I guess the politics are a little bit, uh, you know, uh, disturbing to, to conservatives, but, I mean, that's just, the reality is he has the power to do it. No, but but it's, it's disturbing because we see a continued march of Obama doing what Bush did before, which is steadily expanding executive power. President Obama went to war in Libya without even a vote. Remember, Bush had a vote in Iraq. Obama didn't have a vote in Libya. And then you saw the enforcement of the Affordable Care Act again and again, especially expanding the employer mandate, extending the deadline well, for that. Let me ask you something Not very specific other provisions. on this. We see him expanding executive power and sort of put, taking over Congress's job. He thinks he's still a senator, but, let me, but like super senator. Let me ask you a, <laughs> let me try to draw one distinction on this, because under Bush, Bush did a very similar thing on Medicare Part D where he delayed and waived penalties for a certain period of time unilaterally. Why is there so much Republican concern over Obama now when there wasn't in the Bush years? Well, the uh, as far as a Medicare Part D, that was a situation where he passed a bill that was sort of more amenable to what the left was aiming for. And so that's why the left didn't push back on, uh, on but Bush. The right. Because, uh, but why and, didn't the and, right 
Why, Why didn't, didn't the right, right push back on I, it? I, I mean, I, look, I mean, the I bottom line is that bill to pass in the first place. George but no, Bush I mean, I pushed back actually on Bush developed when he was expanding. an entire theory, uh, the unitary executive theory. And uh, listen, I agree with you in terms of, uh, of Libya, but uh, Congress did nothing in that instance. And if they wanted to sue the president, Sam? that would have been a great time to do it. Sam, I, this is a great conversation. I'll have to cut it off. Tim Carney from The Washington Examiner MS, and MSNBC contributor Sam Cedar, thank you guys both for being here. Thank, thank you. you. That is all in for this evening. I'm Ezra Klein. You can read more of my work at Vox.com or at Facebook.com slash Ezra Klein. The Rachel Maddow Show starts now with Steve Kornacki sitting in for Rachel. Good evening, Steve. Good evening to you, Ezra. Thanks a lot for that.